Greetings, it is I, Great One himself, Seneca Libertarian Society, CYNLIBSOC.com on the interweb. Send me email, God at CYNLIBSOC.com. That's God, dog spelled backwards. And go fuck yourself. I just finished recording what I think is Anarchy Moment 85. Whatever the previous Anarchy Moment is to this one, everything I'm about to say will have a greater context if you listen to that episode first. After I wrapped that up, I took a walk, made a library run, got a growler of beer, and of course along the way my brain is always going. Because my brain is always going. I have three things I want to talk about here that clarify some of what I discussed in the previous edition of Anarchy Moment. Number one, about people commenting. Again, I want to emphasize, if you're commenting on YouTube, Google, Twitter, whatever, you know, on the website, whatever, wherever, you're commenting about my shit. By my shit, I mean my podcast. If you're looking at my shit, then you're stalking and you're a little too close for comfort. If you're commenting on my podcast, And it's obvious to me, as it was with the three idiots I talked about, it's obvious to me that you didn't actually even listen to the podcast. You have no idea what the fuck you're talking about. Prepare to be ignored at best, and at worst, to be ridiculed in an episode of the podcast, like I did to the three idiots in the previous edition. The only commentary on my podcast that has value to me. And I mean value to me, because I mean, well, my has value. No, 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 bitch. Uh-uh, no. No. I get to decide what has value to me and what doesn't. You don't get to decide that. It's just like customer service. Only the customer gets to decide what is good customer service and what is not good customer service. It's like computer software. Only the people who use the software get to decide what is good software, what's bad software. It's like a television program. Only the people who watch the TV program get to decide if it's a good TV show or a bad TV show, if it has value or doesn't have value. Now, I know you think because you're a fucking idiot, because you're a statist, because you're self-absorbed, because you lack the ability to self-examine, and because you don't have self-awareness. I understand that you think your fucking uninformed opinion has value. It doesn't. It doesn't. Only I... I have here in my hands the new Natalie Merchant CD. Just got that from the library. Only I, in addition to having the new Natalie Merchant CD, which I'm going to listen to as soon as I finish recording this, Only I, sorry, I was reading lyrics in the new Natalie Merchant CD, which is in my hands, which I'm going to listen to when I get finished recording this, which I'm never going to finish if I don't fucking focus. Only I get to decide what comments have value and what comments don't have value. And if it's obvious you've never listened to a fucking podcast episode, your comments don't have any value. It doesn't matter how high your self-opinion is. It doesn't matter how many times you tweet with the hashtag yes all women. It doesn't matter how much of a mangina you are. It doesn't fucking matter. The only commentary that has value to me is the commentary from the people who have listened to multiple episodes of this podcast and have an understanding of the way I think. It doesn't mean they have to agree with me, but it means that they have an understanding of my thought process and they have a similar thought process. 
Not the same because I'm not a statist. I'm not a femistatist. I don't require that everybody else around me has the same fucking opinions that I have because I'm not terrified of people disagreeing with me. And this is one of the big problems I have with a lot of the jackasses who are start calling themselves libertarians and on some occasions anarcho-capitalist is that they're just bringing forth another form of political correctness because as I did an entire podcast on this, as I explained before, anarcho-capitalism, libertarianism, not Republicans calling themselves libertarians, but actual libertarians who are anarcho-capitalists, the real thing, people who, number one, believe in the non-aggression principle and number two, property rights. There's nothing in there about accepting other people, about conforming, about having to accept uh, alternate lifestyles. I shouldn't necessarily alternate. I should say, not because I'm afraid of offending people, because it's not accurate. Lifestyles other than yours. For example, the example I've used. I am not homosexual. I do not approve in some active form of homosexuals being homosexual, I just recognize that it's not my concern. It's their life. And as long as they don't violate the non-aggression principle, and as long as they don't violate property rights, I give the same thing back to them. This is the same thing in the previous podcast. I said women. I make little air quotes around that. I said women a lot of times when I should have said femistatist to differentiate because there are women who are women, who are competent, who are capable, who are anarcho-capitalist, who are ancap leaning, and then there are femistatist. And the femistatist constantly need approval. You can be an ancap without approving of other people. You don't have to approve of fat people. You don't have to approve of black people. You don't have to approve of Jews. You don't have to approve of homosexuals. You don't have to approve of heterosexuals. You don't have to approve of white people. You don't have to approve of men. You don't have to approve of women. You don't have to approve of a fucking thing. And it's fucking, I'm getting fucking sick of all you little mangina and feminazi cunts who are infiltrating the libertarian ANCAP movement, believing that this is a place where everything gets approved of. No. No, you stupid little fucking shits. ANCAPism is not about approval. ANCAPism is about not initiating aggression against other people or violating their property rights. You don't have to fucking approve of people. It doesn't matter. I can see somebody over there, they're doing something, I don't approve of it. As long as they're not initiating aggression or violating property rights, don't give a fuck. It's them. They do not need my approval. I am under no obligation to give my approval. I don't know why this is so hard. I do know why this is hard for you to understand. Because you're a fucking statist and because you're stupid. Okay, I need to move on because my voice is going to die really soon. Second point. When I talk about how every murderer, every rapist, every child molester, every pedophile, all of these people, male or female, all had a mother. And the mother failed to do her job as a parent. And I talked about how the schools, which are run primarily by women, failed to teach these people. Again, because teaching people, you know, not to have sex with eight-year-old girls, that's really complicated shit. I mean, you can't, in, you know, in 18 fucking years of public education and motherhood, you can't expect somebody to actually take time to explain to somebody, to a child, why having sex with an eight-year-old is wrong. I mean, that's just such a great burden for you fucking femistatists out there who are such wonderful parents and care about the children so fucking much. And I pointed out that the femistatist can stop this anytime they want. All they have to do is start parenting. Just fucking parent for a change. 
I want to make something clear. When I say parenting, I don't mean doing more of what we're doing, which is trying to treat boys like little girls. Right? They're, the FEMA state is looking and going, why do boys have hostility towards women? Well, I mean, let's just, off the top of my head, I made no notes on this, let's just pull some stuff out. Little boys have the ends of their cocks cut off by their mothers when they're young. Little boys get spanked by their mothers. In the school, the female teachers tell the little boys to sit down and shut up. When little boys want to go outside and play, the teachers tell them, no, you need to sit there and play with the glitter and the glue because we're not going outside in the sunshine and throwing a ball around because that's, that's boy stuff and we're doing girl stuff today. They're controlled. They're manipulated. They're shit on. They're told that if they just acted more like girls, they'd be okay. And God help them, if they show any fucking sign of personality, they get drugged and turned into little fucking zombies. And do you notice that as all of this stuff becomes more and more common in the public school system and in parenting, of course, in parenting, their mothers don't spend time with them. Their mothers put them in fucking daycare as soon as possible. Their mothers ignore them. And when they grow up and they have animosity towards women, the femistatists don't understand why. I have not a fucking clue. Again, the dog analogy. You buy a puppy, you take it home, you beat it, you starve it, you kick it around. Five years later, the dog gets out. It's mean, it's vicious, it's violent, it bites somebody or it kills somebody. Is it the dog's fault? Or is it the person who raised the dog? What the male children today have is too much feminism in their upbringing and no men, no men teaching them how to behave like men. No men teaching them how to behave around women. No men teaching them how to meet women and talk to women and treat women. I don't mean buying fucking, I don't mean spending money on women because I know you love that. But I'm talking about just treating women like normal human beings. Nobody telling them to fucking suck it up and push through. They don't have, and this was the point of one of the links I posted that got the one feminist cunt that I was talking about all worked up. You know, how dare you fucking insinuate that little boys in public school should have more male teachers in order to provide them with more r male role models. I linked to an article arguing that black children in school need more black teachers so they have black role models. But as I pointed out, I noticed nobody gives a fuck about the lack of male role models for males. Why? Because the fucking femistatists who control the school system and control parenting, control the daycare system, control children for the first 18 fucking years of their life, they want little boys to grow up to be girls. And then when the boys grow up to have animosity, hatred, whatever you want to call it, whatever it may be, towards women, the femistatists, they have, don't have a clue why. They have absolutely no idea why. Just no fucking idea. It's like, I don't understand why my dog bit somebody. I beat my dog every day with a stick. I only feed it once every three days. I kick it really hard multiple times a day. I don't understand why my dog bit someone. What we need is more positive male role models for young boys in the form of fathers and in the community. And of course, the problem is there's a there's a there's a self-perpetuating cycle here because as these young men are growing up, being less and less capable of being good fathers the odds of getting good fathers becomes less and less. And so it's a, it's a downward spiral. And there's no fucking way to pull out of it. It's going to get worse. It's going to get worse. Not better. Which brings me to point number three. I talked about 
many, many times, and recently in my three-part series about the Mangina Cants, Cants, Cats, whatever the fuck his name is, how the government wants women to get raped. Because women getting raped is a source of power for the government. I'm not going to go over that again because I've talked about it enough times. You fucking go back and find the podcast. Femistatist also want women to get raped. Femistatist want women to be victims of violence. Because that is the source of femistatist power. Just as the government gets power from women being victimized, the femistatists also get power from women being victimized. If no women were getting raped, what would the femistatists complain about? How would they hold Take Back the Night rallies without women being victimized, femistatism collapses. It's just like with a Christian. No matter how much evidence you show them that there is not an invisible man who lives in the sky, they're never going to accept that there's not an invisible man in the sky. Because if there is no invisible man in the sky, their entire worldview collapses. It's like a global warming wacko. No matter how much evidence you show them that the climate changes naturally and that every climate model that's ever been produced on a computer has been wrong, they're never going to accept that global warming isn't going to kill everybody in the next 10 years and that it isn't caused by Republicans. Because if they accept that, their entire worldview collapses. Femistatists have a worldview which revolves around women being victims. If women are no longer victims, their worldview collapses. They have nothing. They have absolutely nothing. The femistatist, just like the state, wants women to be raped.